Hey everybody, welcome to part two of this uh, this tutorial. Rob Cohey again, uh, and just a reminder, this is uh, this is the assembly that we're modeling. We're still on the very first part. Uh, we left off um, at the sketch. If you skipped ahead, um, you didn't you didn't miss too much. Um, I just uh, sketched the simple profile, and um, again, we're just we're just modeling up this uh, this main body component of this assembly for the moment. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. Um, had a little slot sketched out, and um, you know, uh, the rest of this um, bit of tutorial is a few just tips and tricks that I've learned um, in sketching uh, with, with Fusion here. Now, everything about Fusion um, can be accessed through multiple methodologies. Um, I have a tendency to use shortcut keys. Some people like to use the, uh, the toolbar at the top to access things like dimensions. Um, some people like to use the, uh, uh, the right clock right mouse click. Um, and what you'll see is I use them all. Um, there's another one that I haven't even brought up yet, a shortcut called the S key. Um, people familiar uh, with uh, transitioning from SortaWorks over into, uh, into Fusion, uh, the S key was a, was a big deal for them. So we introduced that as well. But, you know, again, I'm just kind of sketching out um, the, uh, the initial um, geometry here. I have a tendency to use um, a uh, a lot of constraints, um, a lot of equal constraints, tangent constraints, um, and so forth. So again, like I talked about in the previous uh, example as well, you know, use the right tool for the job here. Um, I'm going to do a three-point rectangle. I could have done a rectangle, but I really wanted coincident constraints on both of those endpoints. Um, and now I have the basic shape that I need to begin to do my first um, uh, feature uh, within this. So start with a sketch. Um, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and extrude this out. So here's the S key. Um, the S key brings up a nice little shortcut dialog box that you can customize. Um, so you just search for the command that you're looking for, hit the little button to add it to your S key menu. And uh, you know, anytime you hit S, it shot, pops right up at your cursor. It's really convenient. Um, something that I've, uh, I've, I've, I've adopted myself. So. so here I'm gonna extrude this out. And uh, the thing about the extrude dialog box, and just like any other dialog boxes in Fusion, you know, if you, if you read them from top to bottom uh, and really go through and explore all the options within, uh, within all the commands, you'll likely figure out um, easier ways to create geometry just within the depth of capability that's in, in the extrude dialog box. You know, initially you see the extrude dialog box and you're like, oh, that's, you know, there's there's not a heck of a lot of options in there. Um, we did that on purpose. We didn't uh, expose a lot of the depth of capabilities in the dialog box for the purposes of ease of use. But as you click through more options, um, you'll see uh, more and more capabilities. And we're going to use a lot of those. Here we use the mid plane um, and the overall distance um, uh, option instead of the uh, same distance each side. So the other thing I've done uh, is kind of I've kind of carried forward with the sketch, and and um, you'll notice that down at the very bottom of the screen, uh, I accessed something um, called the timeline to go back in time, if you will. So I could edit the original sketch as opposed to make another one. Another best practice that I like to use, um, you know, I like to do minimal sketches. Don't put too much into a sketch, but don't put too little into a sketch. When it makes sense to to manage all these things in the same one, um, I highly recommend. Uh, trying to do that. Okay, so a um, couple of things um, that uh, you you may not have noticed uh, in uh, while I was placing that large, uh, that longer dimension there, that 122. When you're in the middle of the uh, dimension command, it's good to right click your mouse and see what options are available. Uh, one was the uh, dimension to tangent. Now what I'm about to do here is I don't want to sketch the same thing on the right that I have on the left, so I'm going to use the mirror command again. Use the right command for the right features. And I've saved myself a heck of a lot of work, right? Um, a lot fewer parameters to manage, manage it, um, as a result. And you know, within the sketch palette dialog box, there's ways to kind of clean up the view. And we're going to use this a little bit with slice a little bit later and show and hide constraints and so forth. But I've made a change to the sketch, which includes some additional pieces of geometry. Rather than doing another extrusion, why don't I just add, because this is supposed to be part of the same body anyway. Um, and really what I wanted to do there was just demonstrate the, the, the importance of history here, 